get its supplies forward. And to do that, you need vehicles like this. This vehicle is what they call an M548, Model 548 supply vehicle. And it was originally made by the Americans, but uh, lots of countries around the world bought it and used it. This one was used by the British Army in the first Gulf War for carrying, resupplying its anti-aircraft missiles, uh, resupplies to the batteries in the front line. And uh, why these vehicles are so important as a track vehicle, we all know the Army's got lots of big trucks with massive wheels. But if it's a tracked vehicle has gone across the battlefield, it may have got to places the wheeled vehicle just can't get to. And if those tanks or armoured vehicles need to fight the following day, they're going to need all those things that we know armies need, things like food for the troops, ammunition for the guns, fuel to keep the vehicles going. An army uses a huge amount of fuel. Give you some idea, one of the bigger main battle tanks driving around our arena here, one lap is about a gallon of fuel. So you're going to need an awful lot of fuel to keep that force going. And that's why you need vehicles like this. This is like a force transit on tracks to bring those supplies up to where the fighting's going on. So it's got a flatbed in the back, you can load up with the supplies, crew are in the front, tracks underneath for that mobility. And what we've done, when the British Army got rid of a number of these, we took them down here at the museum, we've actually put bus seats in the back of them. So if you fancy having a go what it's like bouncing around in the back of a track vehicle, this will be running throughout the rest of the afternoon from down in the far corner there till about quarter to four. So um, health and safety, I have to say, I have to remind you, you've got to be over a metre tall, I'm afraid, to have a go in it. But it uh, does give you a good idea idea what it feels like in a track vehicle. And those tracks, how tracks work, we often see them, but do we actually know what's really going on? The whole idea of the tracks, as I said earlier, is to spread the weight out, and the only two wheels that are being powered by the engine on this vehicle are the ones at the front with the teeth in. And the idea is, is you're laying down your own roadway, that's a track, you bite into that roadway and pull yourself along it. The wheels that are on the ground, as it were, they're not actually powered at all. They're just spreading the weight out of that big heavy vehicle across the track. The wheel at the back on each side is just keeping the track nice and tense so it doesn't flop off. So you lay down your own roadway, bite into it, pull yourself along it and pick it up and throw it forward again. And they've got the ground pressure under those tracks lighter than the ground pressure under your feet on some vehicles. Famously in the Falkland Islands, a little light scorpion tank drove across a frozen bog. He was absolutely fine. The commander jumped out the side of the vehicle and he fell straight through the ice because the ground pressure beneath his feet was greater than that underneath the, the tracks of the tank. That's how clever they are at spreading weight out. And it means, as I keep saying, you can go to places you wouldn't normally be able to get to. Now the driver in the front of the vehicle has two steering levers, he doesn't have a steering wheel. Like most track vehicles, if you want to turn left, you pull the left lever back, it breaks the track, it slows the track on the left hand side, the other side keeps going and it pushes you round the corner. So if you want to turn right, you pull back on the right lever, come to a dead halt, you pull back on both levers together and that will slow you right up to a halt. Downside of it, you're going to wear out your brakes very quickly.